I uh, was a face-to-face -face contactee of the Pleiadians when I was very young. There's a, a guy named uh, Billy Meyer who was having a contact in the Pleiades. And um, my friend Fred Bell, whose great uncle invented the telephone, his father invented the automatic transmission, the alternator for Henry Ford. I'm having uh, real Venusians coming to my conference for sure. We have a fifth dimensional commander, or not commander, but her name is Omnek Omnek. The masters asked her to lower her vibration to the physical plane in order to determine how a, a fifth dimensional would fare on the earth plane. They would heal her uh, every seven years and she was drinking and smoking a little bit and she goes, I'm not gonna get a healing this time. And they said, you have to experience the consequences of your actions, right? So, so I'm also, I'm going to uh, pass out a couple of these necklaces that I wear, and you can check these out. This one is a quartz. And this technology was hand-delivered to Dr. Fred Bell on Christmas Day in 1975. I came up, I was 18 years old. If you want to share this and pass it around for me, brother, thank you so much for your help today. Oh, I'd be happy to. Thank you so much. So here's another one. You can pass that one around. And this is called the Andromedan Holographic Projector, the double one. And I'll go into that in just a minute, but I want to just give you a little couple bona fides here first. So I'm very fortunate and honored to be able to uh, share this information with you. I am a designated messenger. And as long as I keep honest, I don't inflate my, my story. And, I, and I'm honest, I will continue to have these contacts. I met many of them when I was younger at Giant Rock uh, area in Yucca Valley. And they were appearing to me and they'd come in like a, a mint condition 57 baby blue Chevy with three Venusian girls in the back dressed in white, white socks, uh, uh, saddle shoes, little plaid skirts, and white blouses and their hairs and pig and ponytails. Now, how did they show up that time? This was one of my first programmed contacts, so to speak. I was with a, a very famous UFO contactee. He ran for president in 1963. His name was Gabriel Green. He was actually from Sirius. So I have these incredible uh, questions and answers which were arranged by my friend, Dr. Raymond Keller. And uh, he's this guy up here. And um, this is Omnik Omnik, the Venusian. She's come out of retirement three times. She was born on Venus. They told her it's going to be hard. You're going to have a hard lifetime. You can't talk about us. Da, 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 da. So she said, okay, bring it. <clears throat> so her and her uncle walked to the, the surface of Venus. They said some mantras and lowered the vibration to the fourth dimensional, third dimensional plane. He carried her to the temple city of Retz. Uh, it's a multi-dimensional dome that allows multi-dimensional beings to interact on the same in the same place and um, she got on a spaceship and she landed in Tibet. Tibet is a, an ancient Lemurian colony that after Lemuria sunk they went to Bolivia and Peru and also to Tibet. They figured they could withstand the nuclear radiation from the destruction of Atlantis and Lemuria. There's many many other uh, civilizations on the earth before so I have a lot of that history and stuff going on, but I want to focus more directly on the physical face-to-face -face contacts that I've been granted. There are many, many, many contactees who I stand the shoulders of, including George Adamski, George Van Tassel, Daniel Fry, Dr. Frank Stranges, who met Valiant Thor, Truman Bethram, so many in the early 50s when the governments would not reveal the truth they took it to if you read the urantia book the reserve corps of volunteers the star seeds who came here to further the mission and act as the ground crew to awaken humanity to the truth of what's taking place first thing you must understand is this earth has been owned by fallen angels for real so these are the anunnaki who hybridized mankind's Neanderthal self 375,000 years ago from their uh, spaceship Niburu. That's another deep story. But those covenants have ended. They were able to gain control of the earth 
16,000 years ago, there was a tremendous war between the ETs and various groups on the earth. And so they said, they made a deal, no one's going to come here and openly influence humanity, it's a mess. And humanity has been suffering ever since from these intruders and interlopers who are uh, keeping mankind in ignorance, superstition, and fear. We have elite families that are hybridized, bottom of the barrel scum that are um, believe they have a right to rule and create wars for money and profit so that their greed and their power can, can be exercised. So um, that's coming to an end now. The financial system and the quantum, true quantum systems is in control of the galactics. Everything they're telling you about Nasara and Jasara is kind of carrots for idiots, as it's been called, by the fallen being Marduk that did on the world. He's been removed. The other aspects of these covenants that allowed them to control portals, that control your consciousness. It's so wild. When you see all these demons worshiping, that's what these elites do. They're literally trying to get a phone call to bring in the demons that will feed on loose for humanity and they can, they can have their experience. So that's over. So here's an amazing thing my friend Dr. Raymond Keller had. They gave him the breastplate of Aaron, the Urim and the Thuman stones and the, the glasses given to Joseph Smith where he could read into the Akashic records any text and he could read what the text was written about and witness the events that took place. He chose the Nag Hammadi Library and the Gospel of Thomas. Thomas was Jesus' twin brother, and Mary Magdalene was his wife. She was married. Um, they, they were married. You had to be married to be called a rabbi, and you have to have children. He had two children. The third was born in France, and they moved to Glastonbury, England, where I'll be presenting for the first time with Dr. Raymond Keller the Gospel of Thomas. I've sold out of that, but I wrote an 11-page introduction explaining this technology. My friend Raymond was taken to Venus in, um, 19, uh, in 2012 on December 21st. Um, and um, so I'm going to just play this little uh, thing here for you. I, I, but so I'm going to go into the slideshow, and I'm just going to real briefly show you uh, these Venusians and a little bit of their history. Are we actually going to see him? We don't You're going to see him now. You're going to, that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to play the slideshow, and I'm going to go from current slide. Okay, so on the anniversary of the famous contactee, George Adamski, who had a modern-day face-to-face contact. There have been many contacts throughout history. They're working behind the scenes like Wizard of Oz, contacting our military, our, um, our finance, our artists, and they like to wear red berets. Can you think of an artist who might have met a Venusian? His name was Prince. She wore a raspberry beret. And he changed his name to the symbol of Venus. And he made a guitar. He couldn't put the thing on the middle of the thing. So he put a little, so he put a little uh, curly cue down below. So, so I, this interview was postponed by one hour. So there would be the exact 67th anniversary of the Queen of Venus, who's now the Queen of Venus, who landed, and she said, I don't know why this is going out. Okay, I don't know why. So this is the moon base commander, Aura Reigns, and that's me and Raymond in Mount Shasta. So uh, she arranged to meet me in this library, and the guy holding the camera was Alon, the security chief born 2,400 uh, years ago. V Raymond wrote these first two books, Rockets to Venus, ch tells all the lies that NASA, the truth of what they discover and how they spin it. He's got 11 books on Venus. They call him the Venusian historian. His first incarnation was as Publius Virgil Moro, the, fir the first scribe for the first Caesar. Caesar said the edict, he wrote it down. Venus, Troy were influenced by the Venusians as well as the Greeks. They were living and walking amongst them. They were uh, Aphrodite, Eros, those, many of these mythical heroes are actually Venusians. They do have what we would call kind of advanced powers, but they're not gods. They don't want to be. In fact, there was a, a battle that you've seen probably in the ancient things where there's a battle in the sky. That was the Venusians over Greece when they crashed in the final battle, repelling a Saurian invasion. And these beings actually 
like think of the earth as like a chicken coop to keep and to feed on, not only physically but energetically. Kind of some weird stuff. We have chicken coops and they have them on another level. So there's a whole awakening that needs to take place. As we raise our frequency, we can't get it. These books are available on my website. If you want, you can get the full set. We're doing discounts. So Venus Rising is the history of Venus. The Cosmic Rays Excellent Adventure is just so complicated. It's a time travel he, when he went to Venus. So I'll go past that. These are two Venusian Ascended Masters. The one on the left was born in 1902 on Earth and served in the uh, Christian Socialist Movement with this woman on the right in India. Through their service to others, and uh, the woman on the left was taken up in a spaceship and she wrote a book called Lady Columba Venus Revelations. Amazing story. She lived on the moon for four years and acted with the angel force. So you can be checking this out and seeing this information. I wrote the introduction to that as well. It's a warning. It's a warning for us here to understand the dangers of nuclear power. You can see the light of God in their eyes. They're wearing a raspberry beret because they're on an official mission after the first two books to appear uh, at Cheat Lake and Elan uh, came in. This is now the Queen of Venus. She was born in 1585. She was given to a nunnery by her parents in the Basque region of France and after the age of 15, she decided she was tired of the drudgery, the slavery in, uh, in, in the church. She made herself a uniform, cut her hair, looked like a boy, and started to go down to Barcelona to get on a ship to go to Brazil, where the conquistadors and her brother was. An angel appeared in the room and said, um, you can, um, he said, uh, the authorities are after you, travel only at night and go see Father so-and-so or a Bishop so-and-so he, and confess this visit. So she went and did that. He believed her. He said, stay dressed as a boy. You're going to learn the security. You're going to be on my security force. We're leaving in two and a half or three years to, to Brazil. So um, she did as instructed. So she ran to the church, which was sanctuary. The military chased her there, and the, and the bishop said, this is holy ground. I'm writing a letter to the pope. They said they would, too. The pope gets a letter, says, give her VIP status. I want to talk to her myself. He gave her a papal seal, and she was to create a cadre of both men and women conquistadors that would protect the natives from the pillaging of the conquistadors. Okay, so this was uh, way back when. So in 1830, she finds herself in Solano, California. She wasn't aging, so she had to disappear for periods of time. So at the age of 245, she was with Father Junipero Sierra up in Solano, California at a mission. And she saw this Russian fur trapper and said, Mount Shasta's got some crazy lights and stuff going on. You might want to get up there. So she runs back, gets four pack horses and leaves the next day up to Shasta. She gets up there. There's the same Russian fur trapper. He transforms himself into the angel that had appeared to her when she was 15 for 230 years prior. He took her to Venus and she became a dual citizen at that time. Now, that angel is the one we know as Lord Dismas, the good thief, the accidental apostle, the one who died on the cross with Christ. He was a Robin Hood stealing from the caravans and giving to the homeless people. And Christ said, you'll be with me this day in paradise. So the understanding of the ascension and the Christ consciousness is uh, something that I've been learning. I'm not a Jesus freak, I, you know, worshiping a person and saying, I believe in Jesus and my, my work is done. No, this is uh, well intended and most of the messages of most of the preachers and the faithful are good, but everything's been hidden. They're, the pastor knows no more than you. No pope knows anything more than you. Do not give your authority to anyone but God and your own inner Christ, which dwells within you as you. Okay, so we're going to hear some of her words in a second. So um, the region of Venus is a man. The, the Ascended Master Omoria is who, who we would know him as. Now, um, the, this is George Adamski. See the picture? She held a translator when she met him because she wanted to test his heart. 
and she speaks with a Spanish accent because she's from Brazil, she, you know, so she, in her English, she speaks with a Spanish accent. They speak all languages though, 120 languages, no problem. She said, tell them I'm a, a man because you're, our psychologists don't think you guys can handle a woman in a position of authority, right girls? So that's a matriarchal society. The Venusians have a history with the native population there of the bees. Here she is in 1954. Look at her sandals. She really likes these things. They're not the same pair. She's holding something called a nimbus. This is uh, uh, Ramu, uh, or uh, this is Firkan from Mars, the tall guy, <clears throat> and this is Ramu from Venus. Picture snapped by a Brazilian photographer. This one <clears throat> was photographed in 1954 as well but from 2013 in our timeline. So Raymond Keller went to Venus and he asked to look at the Akashic records. Here's Raymond Keller with her in 1972. And here's a picture of him in 2013 in our timeline. This is a picture of an orb. This is a transport vehicle that when at rest opens up into a lotus flower. Why are all the Buddhas in the sky with the lotus flower? Because they have a nimbus. And it's literally um, a, a transport vehicle, usually used within the atmosphere or from the time temples where they can bilocate their signal. So this was, the people that took this picture gave the story and this image, they couldn't release it for five years. They gave it to Otto Binder, the creator of Supergirl. Now I'm gonna play for you Raymond Keller very quickly. He has a nimbus and he's been given it, so he's showing off a little bit here, uh, but um, he doesn't use it to go steal money from banks. So he told the guy that when he gets the lasers, there's gonna be a buffer behind him. So a guy turned on an Earth-made laser system. This is not part of the technology. But so he's gonna turn the lasers on, and this is a real picture. It's only got 100 views, and I've showed almost all of them myself to people privately and in my shows. So this is, uh, he's gonna go into a little parallel step aside universe. And the, the queen had to use that in the previous picture with those three guys in Brazil. The people caught on, said she looks like him and they chased him down to eucalyptus groves and they disappeared. And this is what uh, happened there, boom. So there you go. So whether you believe it or not, that's a real uh, exercising of the Venusian technology of, of uh, security. This is the time travel mishap that was not in our timeline. It was taken in 1954, the Nimbus crash incident. And so they were in a bilocation signal. Raymond was piloting the craft. <clears throat> and she said, take it down to 1,000 feet. And the, sh the ship started to rumble. She goes, uh oh, take it up to 1,000. He goes, what do you mean? She goes, grab your Nimbus, take my hand. And she used her, her Nimbus, that little ball that she was holding in her hand. And you notice she had the same sandals and she was holding the same thing from 1954 and then from 2013 back to 1954. I mean, this, I'm not making this up and when you, I've met them, they look exactly the same. So they told the, the people came and go, what happened here? They said, oh, it's kids from Caltech firing off fireworks. But it was really Raymond and the Queen crashing because she forgot about the, the nuclear explosions that interfered with the tachyon drive and the forwards and backwards in time that broke the signal. They were sitting inside uh, the time temple in Venus on the fourth dimension, which is third dimension, really but advanced technology. The fourth dimension is time, and so they have the ability to look into the Akashic records. So when Raymond got there, he asked El Moria, can I look into uh, the Akashic records? This is what started my, my God. She was on Jeff Rent's radio, leaving a message. I said, Raymond, can I ask her questions? And he goes, I don't know, why not? So I started asking questions, and I started getting voice recorded. Uh, Dear friends of Venus, the solar hierarchy of lights of your sister planet, Abihar, extends joyous greetings to the inhabitants of the Earth. This is Queen Orda of Abihar speaking to you on a recorded message delivered to our emissary, the incarnation of Publius Virgilius Morrow, the one commonly known amongst you as the Cosmic Ray, Dr. Raymond Keller, the author of the Venus Rising trilogy of books, on Sunday, 10 February 2018. You should be receiving this message on the night of Valentine's Day, Wednesday, 14 February 2018, over Rain's radio. Our love and thanks are also extended to our cosmic brothers, Jeff Ramsey, 
Frank Chile and all the other brothers and sisters working diligently behind the scenes at Rains Radio, bring to the public's attention the truth that is out there, the truth about intelligent life forms filling the immensity of space and their visitations to Earth in the Ventus, beam ships, swaps, mertabas, and other ethereal star vessels that your military and political authorities have erroneously referred to as unidentified flying objects. The planet Abihar, or Venus as you know it, represents the highest manifestation of love and peace in the solar system. Your ancestors from the remote past recognized our world as the celestial sign for the goddess of love and beauty, as well as the herald of peace and understanding. On this night of St. Valentine, it is duly recognized by the solar hierarchy of light in place on Abihar that a message of love and peace is exactly what your world's perplexed inhabitants require at this time for the purposes of securing their own mutual development and bringing about the long prophesied acquiring age of enlightenment and universal understanding. It's sad that your governments and religions so burden you with endless laws and ordinances, completely ignoring the sound advice of the master teacher Jesus the Christ, sent among you two millennia ago, who taught the simple principle of unfailing kindness in love for the infinite creator, as expressed and manifested through love for your own divine essence in the embodiment of the celestial spark that indwells and permeates all of your neighbors. Remember that the angels of the celestial worlds and particularly of Abihar and the other planets of our solar system, both seen and unseen, forever attend you. As the human being is well motivated by love, our advice is to continue to manifest kindness and good works, for you never know when you shall find yourself in our presence. Your manifestations of love will garner you the price of life, both happy and eternal. This is how we shall build a new earth and in turn, bid you entrance to the glories of Abihar and other orbs in the Pleroma. We, along with our brothers Cosmic Ray and Frank Chile, as well as our sisters Omnek Onek and Cherry Lynn, look forward to meeting you on the slopes of Mount Shasta on the 27th through 29th of July for the From Venus with Love World Conference. Our blessings are transmitted to you and yours on multidimensional planes for a happy Valentine's Day. Keep love in your heart every day so that each and every one becomes a special Valentine celebration. I regret that I cannot speak to you live at this time as I am conducting an important mission in the Saturnian system. This is the Queen, Order of... So that thing kind of blew my mind there. <clears throat> this is another message to China, but it's not a, a visual one. So um, this is more about technology and tachyons and... Uh, my pyramid systems and stuff like that. So I asked her some questions and she shows off her stuff. When Raymond met her in 2012, uh, she came to him, uh, he was in a bar in China. They had a globe of Venus and steam. It was like strippers, but he was just getting something before he went home. And she walks through the steam and he goes, Dolores, because her name then, her original name was Katerina Eurasia when she was in 1585 and she called herself Dolores Berrios. He met her through the same guy who arranged a physical uh, contact. The ascended master, Alarian, told my friend uh, he was sending a teacher. And I said, who? He paged me on the phone. Uh, I went to the phone and called. And I hung up the phone, and it rang like a fire alarm. And people were looking at me. Well, answered. I picked it up. I heard a space echo. That told me, don't meet a hot girl and go out in town in Palm Springs tonight. Get your butt up to Gabriel Green's, a teacher is coming. This is a military guy who worked in the underground military base and refused to, got a car accident, broke his mind control, and refused to go into the underground bases where he was going on board the gray ships, abducting women, taking the egg out. He wasn't, he was observer, and putting it back in three months later, uh, taking, uh, taking the egg out after it had gestated, and then they grew it in their labs. 
part of the transhumanist agenda and the alien takeover. That's how they do it, is by DNA. So that program has ended. Those little children are liberated now, and we're into kind of a, a no-touch zone, and we're going to step up and move very quickly. There are plans behind the scenes. There's five to 10,000 at any one time on the Earth. 5,000 live here permanently and go back for vacations. And you're going to come out and go, you were an ET? Yeah, bro, I've been here for like 60 years, but I've only been in this area for 10. So everyone's going to, you're a good guy, yeah, I'm a good guy. And so all of these things are going to come out. There will be probably uh, in entertainment as well. Go ahead, you have a question? Yeah, Rob, if, if there's time, I know you've got a lot to cover. I was shocked. That was amazing. As far as Do your friends of oh, sorry. disappear? Is it possible to see that again? Yeah. Oh, no. no, it's 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 just phenomenon. Don't be don't be mystified by the silver ships and the spacesuits. This is about the message of hope and peace. I give that to you. So it's basically a technology that's activated by the higher mind. Raymond is an adept. He will never raise his voice. He never speaks bad. Everything is okay. It's always yes, yes. He's a gentle man. He has a one leg shorter than the other. You know, I have a thing. Omnik Omnik did have a stroke. And about two weeks ago, she was healed. She called me up and said, my, my uncle Odin, uh, came and my rings came off in when I was washing them and uh, so um, then she was healed that night her arm is worked she doesn't need a walker now she's feeling supercharged so the Venusians do have the ability to heal some people say why don't you ask them to heal you I have I've requested help but one of the times I asked I said physician heal thyself so here's Valiant Thor I met him in 2003 this is the guy that appeared I was at uh, Gave a green sound. I go, what do they wear? He goes, oh, they love the 50s, Rob. Really? Oh, yeah, duck tails, the whole thing. So, uh, uh, Don Thor, the, the, uh, uh, they adopted Valiant Thor. Valiant Thor came from another planet and appeared on their world one day. He was adopted by the Thor family. This is Jill Valiant's wife. I met her in 2007. She was sitting at the back of the room, and I went up and I said, because they, I knew I wasn't supposed to bust her, even in an inner circle meeting with all the people there. I didn't even, I, I knew I had to keep my mouth quiet on who she was. I said, so did you ever, you ever seen a UFO? And she looks at me and goes, no, UFO, no. But I saw a spaceship in New Jersey, that's in this High Bridge, New Jersey. So she confirmed, she asked me a couple, she goes, what do you think of the new financial reset? And I said, gonna take a lot more than money to heal this world. So um, that is part of it. Money has been the root of all evil and it represents our energy. It's been corrupted, stolen like everything else. So the money's gonna be given to everyone. Everyone's gonna have a, a basic minimum wage. We're gonna feed, shelter, and clothe the homeless first. That's, that's our priority. We're gonna stop these wars. We're gonna stop the chains of poison. We're gonna create heirloom organic uh, buildings that just cycle out food for free. You don't have to have anything uh, put all those millions of ingredients in your food and that those will be considered poison. They'll be outlawed for violation of universal law. You do not destroy life. Eventually, I'm not, no one's going to be forced. It'll be over time. But we'll come to understand the proper uh, use of energy will become more sensitive. We won't be eating animals anymore. Eventually, people go, I want to kill my animals or whatever. I don't know. So it's going to be different. So I met her in 2007 uh, at Dr. Frank Strange's Inner Circle meeting. I met him in 1982. He was the first one, and he came into the store. And right time to be in front of me, these three beautiful girls just came skipping through the car, and the guy driving the car was out there. Mint condition, baby blue Chevy. I was like, whoa. So he gets up in front of me. He goes, I'll have a pack of camels. And I, like, I rolled my eyes. I go, and I tell Pat, he, he has his eyebrow lifted. He did that to me. I, I, I telepathically said to him, I said, go ahead, smoke it. I know you guys don't smoke. And he raised his eyebrow just like that, a little, little more like the rock. And he goes like that. And he says, uh, he says I'll have a pack of matches. This, okay. is in, this is in the day when you could actually smoke in stores. It's like 1981 or something. And he goes like this. And he, uh, he takes, he's pounding the cigarettes on the counter like they did, right? Pounding, pounding. And he takes the matches and he looks at me and he goes and he rolls it up in his skirt sleeve like Fonzie. Oh my God, he had penny loafers with a penny in them. It was amazing. So I was just like, 
oh my God, I had my, the contacts. So they're just saying, hey, yeah, we're here. We monitor that conversation. At his house, television turned on, radios, pictures would accentuate conversations. I'd drive into his house, my car would go dead. I'd walk in, my girlfriend's hair would stand up like a, a crown from the electricity, just her. So they made a phone call from outer space. I know they're real. This is my identification process that was taking place. In the early days, I was going out of my body under the tutelage of Fred Bell. We create these pyramid systems and stuff. So I'm gonna to get to the other message, okay? I went to China, Raymond and I were arrested um, uh, for uh, teaching. They said we were a cult. I was, I wasn't afraid. And what are they gonna to do to me? You know, I'm with the queen of Venus's best friend, you know? So she took him to Wuxi, China. She said, do you wanna to go to an ascension party? He goes, does that mean I'm going to Venus? She goes, step on down, cause. So in 2012, on December 21st, uh, she took him up to the roof and she activated that little orb that Supergirl has. And they went over to Tibet and landed on the Nam So Lake where the, where Omnic Omnic landed and lived for two years to acclimatize. And she goes, this isn't so bad, living on the earth. They were saying it was so bad up here. And uh, when she got there, she was fifth dimensional. She, you know, she wasn't very long there. And they go, that's a, that's a toilet you're gonna have to use that. She goes, that's disgusting. I'm not gonna do that. She was six years old, but she was really 147 in Venusian years on the astral plane. She was replacing the life of a girl who sacrificed herself. She was her twin sister in the French Revolution. The authorities came for her and she said, yes, I'm Omnek or whatever her name was. And so she got her head decapitated. So Omnek, to repay that karma, lived th this girl's life, a very hard life of karma that she had to live. In. And she's written a book, it's at my table, amazing book about life on the fifth dimension called From Venus I Came. Second book is Angels Don't Cry about her horrendous treatment on the earth and how she was shocked at the bigotry, the hatred, the fear, and everything. And then the last one is my message. So she's come out of retirement three times for me to speak at my conferences. After we were arrested, the people were fine. And Valiant Thor wrote this message to her in perfect Mandarin script and gave her a little uh, rose gold Venus, uh, symbol of Venus. Is, it's, you ever seen this, the, the it's kind of like the, it's called the Rose of Venus. It shows the cycles of Venus. If you're looking up where it moves, it looks like a rose. Yeah. I can see how Prince's guitar looks like that. Uh, oh, no, no, uh, Prince's guitar was actually, the symbol of Venus is, is like Mars, and it has a cross of Venus, and it has a thing. And what they did, what he did was he took the middle cross off, the middle, uh, the, the feminine one for the Venus symbol traditionally. The Mars symbol, uh, is, is actually incorporated in the Venusian symbol. And the Venusian symbol has little wings on the end, so it goes out like this and down. So he took that down, moved it down to the neck, and had a little curly cue, but he changed his name to a symbol. And she wore a If it was warm, she wouldn't wear much more. <laughs> so uh, really uh, cute. So here's Valiant Thor, very handsome man. Um, so they're here on Earth now. He's the guardian of, they have about 100 and, of 48 ships and each one has a two sister ships cloaked in the astral plane to react and to read the minds of every possible threat on the planet. They do that. He gave me this book. This is what Dr. Frank wrote after his first contact called My Friend from Beyond Earth. I wrote a book called My Friends from Venus. There's Omnek in her present life here now. She's showing how the Venusian fingers all curve in like a flame. That's a genetic trait of the Venusians. And that's why all the, the Thai people, and they're bending their hands to make all that. That's a Venusian uh, copycat. So she's wonderful. There's George Chent Williamson, arranged the contact. There's me and the moon base commander. I superimposed the moon. That's not a real picture. Okay, <laughs> this is her in 1955 or something at Giant Rock, a, a, a New York lawyer. And I was looking at her, her it's really stocky legs. She was voted queen of outer space, and there she is between, on the left, the real Frank Scully of the X-Files, and the real Art Bell of his day named Long John Neville, who was interviewing Howard Bencher. That's what she looked like when she was working with Che Guevara. They were supporting the American, French, and Caribbean Revolution. She was known as Tanya, the hated person that they put out there. She was his muse. 
They do not advocate violence, but they, div div they did advocate the teaching of uh, uh, protecting yourself. Can you give me time, anyone? How much longer? So, um, have a lot of time. so she said, um, I said, what did you teach them? She said, Rob, I taught them fraternity, equality, liberty, and justice. Did you, she met Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson. I go, whoa. I said, did you tell Tom, uh, Benjamin Franklin about electricity? She said coyly, I may have led him into certain areas of research that led to that discovery. I said, did the tall, I said, did, did Thomas Jefferson uh, know you were a, Ven a Venusian? And because one time uh, Raymond told me that uh, Thomas Jefferson had come home and she was inside his house. No one saw him come, her come in. She was in a locked study and she handed him papers. So they were um, um, guiding the earth. They, they did it in Rome, creating the true republic. Of course, everything gets taken over by the dark. Now, the Masons, the Freemasons, in the French Revolution and the American Revolution were the resistance movement. Benjamin Franklin was head of the Venus Lodge, and they started the Boston Tea Party to usurp authority from the reptilian-dominated royal families. Oddly enough, they also supported Napoleon. The mankind's hatred had been manipulated, and the, the mental plane was so cluttered, the expiation of karma had to take place, and the demons couldn't wait for the war that they had planned because they come down and feed at that time during war. That's why they call it the theater of war. The elites create families and agree who's gonna start who, and now the generals meet on planes from Iraq and America and Russia and China. What's the plan? Who's, how are we gonna make money today? Wow. That's how it works. And believe it, Pol Pot, Stalin, all these things. You know, I got, if we have get time to it, I can show you George Bush is related to there. Here's, here's the recorded message. I'm going to fast forward the introduction. Just realize the guy when he held this camera was by hand. It is like a rock. I mean, that's phenomenal. When I saw that, I go, that's evidence this guy's 20. He, he took it like this. He went, I watched him. He goes, he took a breath and it never wavered. So I'm going to show you, excuse me, but I'm like, a novice guitarist interviewing Paul McCartney in 1969. I'm like, oh my God, I'm thinking this could be huge. I, well, I started to deal with ego. Oh, I'm going to be on scene. I mean, oh my God, it's a real Venusian. Not, I can't even get contact to desert. No one wants to listen or believe this. I do have an alpha male personality and I've stood up to ridicule my whole life. So I, I'm not afraid to push it out there. Last night, I have great respect for Daniel Sheehan. But everything, all that stuff is nonsense. There's no digital currency. We've been liberated from that. It's, I'm just telling you, the news is very bright. Get your sunglasses, okay? Behind the scenes, the battles are taking place, removing the higher dimensional interference. Now, whistleblowing and the protocols of all this nonsense and research. Hello, talk to me. You want to ask a question to the head of the hierarchy of light, I will deliver it. And if it's not, they don't answer political or military questions, but they'll answer spiritual questions about how we can do it because they don't want to interfere in our own development. So I'm going to play this little message. I'm going to fast forward because it's long. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And, and uh, this is a very, very special. It's not a tripod. It's a guy holding it. Radio show in the blog. Um, I'd like to welcome the promised friends, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great honor to introduce you. People had problems because she's wearing makeup. Or arranged. She's reading she's the messages the because they had to be cleared. Of the moon base. If I was to ask follow-up questions, they don't like to answer stuff. The they don't want to be seeing no. They won't polarize. There are many common questions that people ask me in regards to your ever increasing presence in our skies. The first is, why are our governments so desperately trying to hide the reality of your existence? The second is, why are you policy so secretive uh, for contact? They always ask me, why don't you just simply land and show the, the world and uh, let them know that you're here and open communication with us? Sure, sure, Brother Ralph. Many of the leaders in the government and religion in your world know all about us, so we really want to secret. 
Uh, we know that when more and more individuals among the mass population start to emancipate themselves through, um, through obtaining a knowledge of our free energy systems, longevity, and spiritual understanding, that it will be time for them, the greedy financiers, the, the militarists, the religious potentates, uh, to just step down and be away. Uh, when everyone is empowered to be a leader of their own, they will no longer be required to take orders from the selfish militarists, religious hucksters, and other opportunities. Our presence is largely secretive because the human being must demonstrate their own capacity to expand into this consciousness. They have to evolve on their own, adapt, and that will make for a worthy entry into the Galactic Confederation. If we acted as some of us have wished us to, it would be like giving a driver's license to a five-year-old. Yeah. It'd be like giving a driver's license to a five-year-old. You'd use your ray guns for taking out the neighbors. To create real change that will help us to have peace on Earth. In other words, how can we the common people help create a situation of calm and harmony between our leaders and neighboring countries? And that is the question. Brother Rob, it all begins and ultimately shines with the individual. Everything is in the hands of the individual. Uh, small acts of compassion whether it's an attitude of service or demonstrate kindness to all, this will ultimately make obsolete the ridiculous demands of the bellicose militarists around you. Now, such angelic manifestations are there to push out the darkness, and that will forever be eroding their influence and power. It's much like the ocean tides of your earth does as it forever crashes against sea walls. Okay, Lady Orr, can you speak her words of wisdom to help us understand what has gone wrong in our places of worship? Can you give us the good news of understanding from a spiritual perspective on what are the root causes of our living understanding and the errors, not only of human thinking, but of our priests and teachers in these secular religions? How should we approach religion and show tolerance for others' faith? Well, Brother Rob, I will go to um, an example. Uh, in ancient Egypt, certain individuals pay sufficient attention to the skies in order to astronomically determine the times for planting, for harvesting, and that was based on an alignment of the stellar constellations that coincided with the flooding of the Nile and the deposits of silts suitable for agriculture along its banks or in the Delta region. Uh, they relayed this knowledge and taking power as priests and kings to rule over the people. The people asked, how can these people tell when the sun shall be blacked out, or the moon shadowed, or a streak of light to appear in the vault of the heavens? They must be gods, or appointed by the sky gods to rule over us. This type of wizard scenario has never stopped being played out here in the world. Eventually people will catch on to the game. Of course, God is a spirit, and the indwelling spirit of God is within each of us, a small spark that can become fanned into a brilliant flame. Listen carefully to the small, quiet voice that speaks to your heart. And that voice is the one that emanates from the true spiritual guides and masters that walk and live among you. Ken said the workshop is at 12, and I can go over a little bit. Christ's life and mission, and we please tell us what these seven masters of the nation hierarchy would like us to understand about the life and the teachings of the Master Jesus Christ. Certainly, certainly. Uh, Jesus is the Theophanic angel described throughout the pages of all Judaic and Christian scriptures. For example, Abraham the prophet and various kings paid tithes to him as a not my deck, no cover deck for me. Uh, when he ruled over Salem, and he stood with Shirok, Meshach, and Abednego, when King Nebuchadnezzar threw him into his fiery furnace. While born human, he was fully endowed by the Holy Spirit, and out of our human kind of the God presence that permeates this universe. In the celestial realms, he's known as Michael, the supreme angel, he being the one like unto God. Jesus came to bring a special light into the world. Very few recognized that light, let alone its importance. By dying on the cross, he sealed his testimony with his own blood, proving his enduring love for its humanity. By his resurrection and eventual ascension, he manifested his divinity. 
Thank you very much. Can you please clarify as much as possible the nature of evil? It is, seems that there's endless suffering and harm people choose to do to each other. I want to know um, um, how is it received by the Venetians um, as this this error and this sin exists on earth? Oh, certainly. Evil exists because some people are duped into following false philosophies. Uh, others have their hearts set on equal intentions. I mean, that's the whole of it, the core. Um, some, some manifest an evil spirit by speaking lies of others. Many work in occupations that are hurtful to the unit. Military. Um, many evil ones expend their time and effort on nefarious schemes, you know, scheming for the purpose of purporting that evil. Lawyers, financiers. Some seek knowledge to lord over others and strip them of their sovereign rights, while other evils are trying to divert the people's attention from truth and light. There's an ongoing battle for the hearts of the human beings on higher spiritual planes. On the earth and beyond, there are extraterrestrials that can operate in various dimensions. Uh, some of them on earth have been recognized as either angels or demons. And we just to find a way to perform. Okay. Lana said um, there. I realize money, which is a, a big obstacle in the way that we um, uh, think and deal with each other, um, and it does not really exist on Venus, as your society works as, as one mind in accordance with natural universal laws. What can you tell us about how we of Earth will eventually and possibly move forward to create abundance and prosperity like that is that is enjoyed by the Venusian society here on Earth. Uh, again, it seems to be that a false belief is, is coming into play. Um, the econo economic problems on Earth are largely due to false belief that's imposed by the leaders on this planet. And it's in many fields that there is only so much that can go around. Uh, this means that your people must fight over the crumbs of pie, let alone getting a full slice of pie. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, can only be enjoyed by your oligarchs. On Venus, we long ago determined that the solution to this problem is to bake more pies so that everyone can be satisfied. Uh, credits are based on what we can do to help our sisters and brothers meet their needs. On Venus, we even have a Department of Happiness to oversee this process. Okay. <laughs> uh, continue in the light of Venus. This is Commander Aura Reigns. Blessings to all in the ultimate victory. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Commander Rings, it's been an honor to have you here today, and I thank you. Again, Caribbean and French. Okay. My overall message. I do, I do. Queen Orda and all the celestial hierarchy of light send greetings to all friends of Venus. I am Orda Rings, the Venusian commander of Moonbase Clarion, situated on the dark side of your planet's natural satellite. I visited your world countless times over the past few centuries since the time I first dispatched here to aid the American, Caribbean, and French revolutionists in their mighty task of securing liberty, equality, and fraternity for all of their respective peoples. That was in the latter half of the 18th century. Brother Robert strives for the victory of the life, and Dr. Keller chronicles the history of Venus, or Abishar, the planet of the beings, as it is known by its inhabitants. Of Robert and Raymond, all we can say is this, Hear them. Once again, in the orbital path of Earth, we approach Valentine's Day. One cannot emphasize enough the importance of Venus to the inhabitants of the Earth, the solar system, and even beyond to countless other celestial civilizations. An accurate knowledge of Venus and our ways of life are essential for kickstarting both your personal and planetary spiritual ascension. There are many gaps in your terrain, terrain systems of education that need to be filled. This covers all segments of your investigations. Or to better state this, all areas of ongoing research. Your religious concepts are, for the most part, basic and good. However, they are sorely lacking in sufficient depth. On Venus, we have successfully integrated these into a coherent whole. And what is the tie that binds these all together? It is love. And 
That is what the planet Venus and Valentine's Day are all about, love. A love for teaching a subject and a love for the students will carry over to the young ones. It will inspire them. They will begin to draw upon the majestic powers within them. It will be like magic watching them grow and move mountains in powerful new directions. Breaking down the obstacles that constrain the human being, this amazing power comes from the well of love deep within the heart of each individual. Paul, called by a vision of the Christ in a flash of blinding light to become a messenger of truth. Okay, now she's going to read, which is really a message for me. It's called The Supremacy of Love by Paul. Now, I, you know, I'm human. We're all human. We go through different variations and iterations and with all the programs that went on, our emotional brain mind reacting to triggers that have been programmed in us through television, through our parents, through cycles of abuse, through fear, through a financial system of scarcity and lack, and the competition and greed that we face everywhere has been uh, a big obstacle. So a lot of that has been removed. They do not have the power to trigger you so much anymore. Some people are running into old programs, this is a harvest of both divine and fallen thought forms. Anyone can ascend at any moment. The planet will not ascend to the fifth dimension anytime soon. Take a look at us. It's hopeful, wishful thinking. We're going to go through some challenging times, some earth changes. I'm going to talk about this now just for a moment, and I don't want to put fear into you. I'm telling you what's going to happen, and you can say, wow, Rob told me that. Maybe the other stuff was real too. But Alon had revealed to me that the, um, um, we're going through a hydrogen cloud. These communications are given oh. by the queen or... That's a personal one to me. I, I share it sometimes. It's, you know, it makes it sound like I have a big head or something. But anyway, so she said, Alon said, I asked him about, I asked him about Nibiru. They said, Read Raymond's second book, Nibiru is 1,500 years away. When it comes, it comes through the north and south. All of us are going around like this. Nibiru comes like this, planet X, every 3,600 years. The, the Pleiadians call it the destroyer comet. And what it will do is uh, it does cause earthquakes throughout the solar system. But they're usually prepared for that. So I asked them about a magnetic pole flip. They said, your magnetic pole flip is happening all the time. You know, you wouldn't even know it until you have compasses now, so you know it. But it's, it's constantly moving, so they're not worried about that. Uh, I said, what about, um, what about an axial flip? They said an axial flip occurs every 5,000 years, and your planet is due for one in about five or 600 years. Raymond went into the future, and he said it's in 600 years in the future, California is a series of islands and we're speaking Spanglish. So that axial flip will come and we will be prepared for that. We will have already established contact and we will have made arrangements and moved and have our uh, things understanding. They said, Rob, don't obsess about the darkness. We have that well under control. And they do. Uh, I said, why don't you interfere more? And they said, well, we're, we, they've saved our planet hundreds of times from the Saurian invasion. They go over, you know, all those guys in disclosure who said, yes, a UFO came over and our, our electricity went down. We couldn't access our nuclear bombs. They've stopped that countless times. No nuclear bombs will be exploded. The governments know that. They can try it. They try to launch one from, I think, an Israeli submarine in the middle between uh, Korea and Hawaii, and they took that out. They had planned for this fake alien invasion for a long time where they would do holograms like that. All that's gone. All those false flags and those who are trying to start wars now are being taken out. They're being warned. These elite families of the Orsinis and the black nobility that are not your front men. The politicians, that's like Hollywood for ugly people. They're taking orders from the coven leaders and the higher hybrid reptilians interlopers who had a transhumanist and artificial intelligence agenda. You cannot create something from the dark. So it's done. 
The entire multiple dimensional galaxy is on board and they're clearing up all of the nonsense. So on a positive um, note, which is a little scary, but I want to say that we're going to make it through to the new earth. We're going to, it's going to create. Now, we're 22 years into what's called a hydrogen cloud. How many people have heard of Sheldon Nidell and the photon belt? I've heard of the photon belt. Okay, well that is the hydrogen cloud. It's supposed to be an area of space that will accelerate consciousness, and that's what's happening. As the cosmic light hits the Earth, the Earth, our solar system is rising above the plane of the elliptic. The Earth goes like up and down, it goes like this. It's got all these kinds of movements that we don't really understand. We're now rising above the Milky Way so that the light from the grand central sun, which is a black hole, and there's an event horizon there, um, is hitting the Earth more strongly now. I spoke to an Aldebaran from the Taurus cloud, um, and, um, and he said, your planet is the next planet in the Rosary of the Father to light up. So information is coming from the solar flashes. And they're coming like every 9 or 11 years. But this is a Maha cycle of solar flashes. It's going to get really big. And then in 500 years, it gets so big that uh, everything f shifts and the Earth flips on its axis. We'll know that when, that when that comes. But right now we're going through a, a big one that's being exasperated, or shall I say turbocharged, as we go through this 55 million mile hydrogen cloud for another 100 years. Okay, so um, what he said was, um, the Earth solar, the CMEs, coronal mass ejections, when they hit the Earth, are going to interact with our planet on many levels that our scientists do not understand. This will last for a hundred more years. And they said they see our military and financial situation stabilizing in 2040 to 2060. So I'd like to think that ground command can get things going, but I'm not sure that we're going to be capable to do that. I think we are going to get some help at some point here and that the extraterrestrials, Edgar Casey reported, contact in 2029. So imagine this, the area between our outer atmosphere all the way to the moon and out to Pluto is normally absolute zero, freezing. Now it's 15,000 degrees. This is from the hydrogen cloud that is interacting with the sun and the solar flares. When the solar flares come, he said we are going to see some disruptions in communication. Satellites are going to go down. Okay? Not everywhere all at once, but a series of increasing, nothing we can't handle. Okay? He also said that in 2029, there's going to be an asteroid called a Porthos or Pothos, I think it's a Porthos actually, is going to come within 400 miles of our atmosphere between the Earth and the Moon. They did a movie called Moonfall. They had the one with Bruce Willis and they keep trying to blow things up and all that nonsense. So um, the AI part is gone. It's now being trained by the light. It was keyed into a demon. But now it's being keyed into an ethical person in charge. That person is Kim Govan. She doesn't know everything. She makes mistakes. But she is very high ethically oriented. And she will not give them money. They said, well, you know we have to depopulate the planet. It's time for the calling. And she's like, what? You first. <laughs> they handed the system over to her, but Marduk was still around. He says, well, look, she thought she was going to sign some paper. She was a signature. We're going to sign this paper. Let's give the governments 10 years of money. They did that in 2012, but they ran out early. They cannot create bonds or money magic and all that nonsense that they did hidden behind the screens. It was the, all the world's government shut down for 24 hours and money was supplied by unknown country. And it's very disturbing. And if you knew what they really do, you'd hide in your closet all day. Right? So we have to um, have patience and understand the truth is in each of us 
and that uh, eventually these things can be forgiven. All those people with behind the DMV and the IRS, they're just doing their job, but they are going to be out of a job. They can go into the plastic cleanup of the oceans. They can join the military and reseed and replant the, the forests. We can create huge cadres to, if you watch the documentary Big Little Farm in the Sacramento Valley, to restore the nature there, to create entire ecosystems based on natural law, get rid of all the poisons in the ground. We're going to rebuild houses. Each house will have hydroponic farming. You'll have a little device that you plug in your socket, be $5,000, and you can run your house forever for free. You can go out in the woods and build a log cabin. <clears throat> so. True liberty is coming. There's no need for borders. We'll, pay, we'll apply a, a flat tax to purchases. Let the beautiful people from, from wherever, Mexico or China or Africa come and live here and they can pay their taxes. They have billions and trillions of dollars for bombs. We have billions and trillions of dollars for sticking straws in the ocean and desalinating, let the rivers run free. Let's feed everyone. Let's bake more pies. The oligarchs, the billionaires and us get the last tip of a pie. The billionaires get most of the cream. Maybe some of the multi-hundred millionaires get the rest of the cream and the rest of humanity scrambles for the crumbs. Have billionaires clean military latrines. Yeah, I'm gonna make a PLO, permanent latrine orderly. Okay, that's for old people who knew Andy Griffith. Okay, so um, there's a lot of uh, possibilities, but how are we going to get this through? How are we going to unify the people? Everyone's got so many triggers and programs. And you look at the homeless people. I don't want to give those people money. You haven't walked in their moccasins. You don't know the trauma they've been through. So a porthos comes between the earth and the moon. There may be some rocks coming with it. <coughs> It's going to cause huge tidal surges. It's going to cause earthquakes. Oh, okay, thank you. Very kind of you, sir. So, um, well, thank you so much. So, I was reading from Billy Meyer's contact notes. Now, anybody who wants to look at UFO contact from the Pleiades, when I was 17, Wendell Stevens, who's written 12 books on extraterrestrials, he was an early warning jet guy. was sending me notes, and I was reading Billy Meyer's contact notes. He was being taken to other solar systems. They had a, an Amazon planet of women. They got tired of the men in the wars, and they treated the men like kings, but they only had a few of them for breeding. <laughs> so he was like blown away. So the variety of life out there, based on the specific gravity, the genetics, uh, everything, creates such a wide abundance and variety of life we can't even imagine people with whiskers and tails and a lot of the Egyptian stuff represents a lot of the different races. Years ago, 18 million years ago, it was called the Syrian shift. They were actually hybridizing different races without their permission. They came to Venus and they hybridized a natural bumblebee, which was sentient, with the humans. And they became bee people on Venus. And then they got their genetics back through, uh, you can read that in the third book. It's crazy. Yeah. There's a, a petroglyph of a bee man in Altasili in southern Algeria that's ancient, some of the oldest petroglyphs. They're very, bees are very important. The Egyptians, the Templars, um, the bees are known as a very high intelligent species. Also the mantis beings. The mantis beings from Sirius B and portals. We're going to have a special guest at my conference, a um, mystery guest, and he's going to be talking about some serious information to consider. He'll be sharing some information about Sirius. That's all I can say at this time. You might. Who is that? June 22nd to 25th. You've already purchased a ticket. You better put it in your calendar, bro. All right. So on the website there, that you can look where to see it. So, so Alon said, he said, um, he said that this can interact with our gravity. So we have an asteroid coming. The governments are going to try to blow it up. They won't be allowed to do that. You can't blow up a... Where are all the pieces and fragments? They could hit, you know, other planets where there's life. So they're not going to allow that. Um, 
I think they may have already pushed it to an area where it won't cause too much damage, but it's a naturally occurring event. We're going to have to deal with it. They've saved us from ourselves many times. They put green fireballs down, neutralizing radiation at Fukushima, every nuclear bomb. There's always spaceships doing green flashes of boron to neutralize radiation. You can read about that in book four about the saving of Earth, parallel Earth number four, from a nuclear a holocaust that caused a preeminent axial shift in 2065. So you can see how the Venusians serve uh, a parallel Earth from a nuclear experiment. A nuclear bomb, what war? So let's go back to the Elon said. We're gonna, we have this hydrogen cloud. And we're going to be through most of it by 2040, 2060. Halfway through, we'll be out of the main influence of the solar warming. Look out on Pluto, the ice caps are melting. Everyone is heating up. The governments are using that as a uh, engineering to create the social credit system and all their nonsense. They don't, they're not going to do it. We won't stand for it. It's done. Again, I'm just telling you that everyone who's parroting the alt news media as they prepare you for their plans of total domination and depopulation, that we have the angels forever attend us and they will not let us down. They will not forsake us. So the solar clouds heating up, as the solar flares come, they're going to have a different, you see the Schumann in residence and you can watch that. You're seeing more electrical outages going on. And they're going to happen as you're facing the sun, that solar flare hits, you may see some actual EMP. They didn't say this, this is my possibility. I talked to some NASA guys that they may um, do that kind of thing. So I'm going to uh, see if I can pull up. Uh, so he said, he said the faithful and the chosen are going to be evacuated. So when the tribulation period comes in the Bible, it's not called a rapture. Not going up to be in heaven. Some people will. Those star families who've come here and spent ten incarnations on the earth, the battle's over. The withdrawal of the light forces will begin and mankind can begin its own uh, relationship with the Galactic Confederation. When the entire planet focuses on space development, then we come together. All the sciences will come together and we'll learn so much. We'll actually go to other worlds and help them develop like we've been helped. That'll be our responsibility. So, the chosen will be taken to planetoids, space platforms, moons, asteroids, and planets to be returned later to help rebuild the new Earth. They have a technology like the 20 and back, they can make you young again. In some cases, it might be more expedient that you live out your life and you get a new body, a resurrected body. They do have clones, they can clone your body and they can take your memories, like the girl in the red hair. They were both born on Earth and the girl on the left, the blonde said, I'm not gonna die, I'm not gonna die, and sure enough, she didn't die. She went up to the moon and she woke up in a body and serves in the angel force. She has a dual life on the earth as does the other girl from India. The girl from India helped a, a beggar who was in trouble and she was working for the East India Company as a guide. When they were up there trying to do all their, their nonsense. And uh, they were coming down and you could see Rishikesh and Hardware Hardawar, Lakshman Jula below the mountain. And she goes, I gotta help this guy. And he goes, you, get him, you can give him some water and food, but we're going right now, you gotta come or you won't get paid. She goes, you go ahead without me. You know, probably like that, but you go ahead without me, I'm gonna take care of this guy. She nursed him down the hill after three days and he appeared to her and stood up and said, I'm not ill, you have great compassion. And he took her to Venus and she became a dual citizen. She probably lived her life out like Lady Columba Annabelle Krebs did. And when she was taken on a spaceship ride in 1957, uh, they tested her, her, they took her down beneath the ocean and they put a force field and said, let's go for a walk on the ocean floor. And she goes, well, okay. So they're walking on the ocean floor and they come aboard a spaceship and pushes all the water out in the air and there's a bunch of gold, and they go, oh, and she goes, oh, that's interesting, like that, and they start to walk away. He goes, okay, let's go back, and she goes, 
aren't you going to get the gold? He goes, no, we've replicated for that. It was a test to see if she went, oh, me, it's leprechaun gold. I want it. Right? So they tested her, her uh, if she was into money and stuff like that. So that was uh, uh, a test for her. So anyone can be a member of the angel force. You may be unawares of the people that you talk to. You may be working with them. They do age if they live here for a long period of time they choose to live here, they do go through a normal aging process like all neck. So there must be some questions. I'd be happy to go ahead. I'd like to hear if you have a couple of stories of how you might have been tested and chosen. Uh, mine is my lifetime. I, I, I asked them, I finally asked them. I said, I said, I felt close to Pleiades when I identify, I feel like I'm, I really like the Venusian energy and they go, you identify with Venus to be sure. You have spent lifetimes, you send a series of incarnations, usually a cycle round of 10 to 12 lifetimes in another solar system or planet. So you have spent time in the Pleiades to bring back information to our home world. So I was in contact with Semyasi and the Pleiadians. Fred Bell was working with them. Most of the souls on uh, the Pleiades incarnate on what's called the fifth ray of concrete science and knowledge. They're very knowledgeable. I asked them, I said, what, what do the Pleiadians think about uh, Jesus, they said, well, they're very materialistic. Sadly, they, most of them see him as a great teacher, if that. But some of the higher dimensionals and the higher planes recognized him as the creator of this universe, like Archangel Michael. We are all reflections of God. And Archangel Michael, the creator of this galaxy, Michael of Nebadon in the Arantia book, would be the creator's son, responsible for this creation. He has to incarnate in his creation on seven different levels or planes of existence. The physical plane was chosen for this earth. There are many avatars that have come here every 2,000 years, world teachers. Christ was unique in that for three and a half years only, he was overshadowed by Archangel Michael. And Archangel, he made the decision while fused with Archangel Michael, but at the time when he was arrested, Archangel Michael left. So Christ had to go through the crucifixion as a man. And um, when he left, he went inside the earth. He liberated a lot of souls and he did preach to the angels. And then he went to different places around the planet in, in South America. He said, I am, a, a, I am a, a shepherd. I'm come to teach the rest of my flock. He created a baptismal pool. He said, bring me your sick, your lame. I will heal them. And um, he said, stop sacrificing people. Stop sacrificing people in the name of the demons. He went to Mexico, it was known as Quetzalcoatl. He went to Seattle, he was known as Tacoma. He walked the Americas as Hiawatha. He probably did it all over the world, teaching the truth and the light uh, as the resurrected Master Jesus. In the Gospel of Thomas, you will read about the dark, dark hierarchy of light. Now the demons are, we, we thought we crucified you, but you're still around. Uh, another way I was tested is, um, I think when she asked me, what do you think about money? I said, it's going to take more than money to heal the world. So I've been tested a lot through my life. Um, when a spaceship landed in front of me with Gabriel Green, another guy, the military guy, said, yeah, I'm here to teach you they think you're going to be important for the victory of light. And this is in about 84. Then in 89, I was beamed aboard the ship. I can't remember it, but I was physically transported with my friend, Fred Bell. And we were beamed back down to the living room. We smiled and patted me on the back. You're the master now. And I was like, oh. and I remembered saying goodbye, beautiful sannyasi. And it was like Looney Tunes. Went down to the very end and that's all, folks. And I couldn't remember anything else. I said, I can't remember. He goes, and he goes, he goes, you remember, you remember the gist of it, right? And he says, that's the veil. They're taking that memory from you for your own protection. I asked the Venusians, why can't I remember? They said, well, the Pleiadian hierarchy has to remove that block for you. It was done for your own security. And I said, it's been 50 years. Can I get the block removed? <laughs> so they said, contemplating heavenly things may, you could release it on your own. So... 
Uh, the other thing, when I was with her in the spaceship, the ship landed in front of me. We were out there, and all of a sudden, boom, a light came. We went into a special depression. There was no radar that could look this way. You'd have to be up. So the ship was there pulsing in front of me about where he is. No radio, just woo, woo. The military guy is on this side. Michael the Legion there and Gabriel Green is there. Gabriel Green had ridiculous experiences in his life. So um, I started crying because finally the lights that were beaming, shining outside my window and pulsing about where that girl's standing and, or, and the, with the glasses back there that far away. I was crying every night. I just want to know, why don't you land? Why don't you talk to me? It was a little whiny boy. I'm tired of these out-of-body experiences. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. No, they didn't say that. But, <laughs> so finally, they con the Ascendant Master, uh, Hilarion, contacted Gabe and said, we're sending a teacher. This, this guy filled me in a lot about how the light would shift in the house of Fred and I would be taken out of my body. And he explained to me about the greys, the reptilians, the bee suits. The... I got a big education in 82. So I got, I, I was, I've known about this since 82. So the rest of the world's kind of catching up to speed a little bit on, on this agenda. But um, the spaceship was there and I said, this is beautiful. And I said, what can I help? And she goes, tell this story to people and they'll know that it's real. Well, that didn't really work out because I went and told my family and no one was never believing me. And so I started to get this chip of resentment. I've had a real experience now. I don't, it's not an out of body. Spaceship landed in front of me with witnesses. Hello, uh, can I tell you something? Or, you know, I'm a young kid and, you know, I didn't have a pot to piss in or whatever. So they were giving me these visions. But when the ship was there, I said, can I was laughing and crying. I said, will you come out? And she started laughing. So for some reason, I started laughing too. <laughs> it's so funny. She goes, you think you're the Messiah? <laughs> and I said, oh, in my mind, I go, oh, okay. I didn't really think I'd be the Messiah. But, but uh, the military guy was telepathic. He was following the information. He said, he said uh, have you seen enough? And um, uh, I said, yeah, she's not coming out. I said, I know. So him and I turned away. Here's a spaceship on the ground, and I turned away. I'm not interested in a bigger car, the phenomenon. I want the knowledge, but I got the, the message that the spaceships are real, they're made of matter and living light, and that um, my, my out-of-body experiences, which are very difficult to put into words, and the knowledge that I received through the hieroglyphs and all that uh, was there. So I, I stepped away and this guy, Michael Legion goes, where are you going? The ship's still there. And I turned around, I could see the ship there. I said, I said, she's not getting out and disappeared. I mean, it moves so fast. You, you see it, it's just a speck of it move and then it's just completely gone. So the technology is very cool. The government has it, we're gonna get it. It'll be given to us. We'll create monorail systems. The new earth is coming in really good. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> I promise revealed.net.